Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this time one more video yet on the variable frequency drive and uh, a few other features uh, regarding that. And I'm making this speed chart, and I'm going to show you how I change uh, the uh, uh, hertz or the cycles per second up here, the frequency, into speeds by using a tachometer. Now there are four or three other videos on this variable frequency drive, so be sure and go ahead and watch those if you have not already. But in those videos, I mentioned that I was going to remove this idler pulley and the extra belt from uh, this drill press, and I have done as so. So now we're down to uh, two-step pulleys and uh, one belt, and I am using the lowest uh, uh, groove on this four, uh, four groove step pulley. Something I did not mention in the other videos and that is when you turn this uh, VFD all the way down and then uh, to zero and attempt to use it there's going to be a, uh, a warning or an error code and that's uh, SP0 and what that stands for is that the uh, set frequency is uh, less than one hertz, so it's not going to work. But there are a host of uh, error codes, and they can all be looked up in uh, the little manual that I showed you. One uh, major disappointment I have uh, uh, on this VFD is that at very slow speeds, and I'm at uh, 10 hertz now, or 10 cycles per second, there is very little torque, and I can quite easily stop it with my uh, my hand just by gripping it. And uh, once I get up, to, or I get up to about uh, 20 hertz, and I'm going to do that now with my hand off camera here. It's a, almost impossible. I can stop it, and I'm sure if I had a half inch drill bit in there, it would stall. But this is a very typical problem of these VFDs: is that they have uh, low torque at uh, low speeds. Now one thing that I have done uh, to counteract this problem is to change uh, function 48 which is called the torque boost. I think most of these devices, these drives, have a, a torque boost and on this particular one it happens to be uh, function 48 and the default was 300 when I went in here and looked at it and I have boosted it up to uh, 450 and that is the top end of it and notice if I go one more then we're back to zero so 450 is the maximum and uh, I'm setting it at that and I'm going to leave it at that I don't believe that it, it, there's a problem but that does give me more torque I suppose there is possibility of heating up or, or something of that nature but in general, uh, electric motors do not run real well at slow speed. Also, there's a very uh, real chance of overheating a motor at slow speed because uh, the cooling fan isn't drawing much air through it. Now, all that being said, uh, and one other thing, there is a radio interference. There's static when I use this because I do have a little radio here in my shop and uh, when I have this on there's quite a bit of static and uh, the radio really is unusable but then again when I'm running machinery with my ears I can't uh, hear the radio anyway so I guess it doesn't matter but just just a point there that there is uh, static produced by this thing. Now in the last video I also mentioned that uh, what we have here on the drive right now is uh, 20.7 uh, uh, cycles per second or, uh, or hertz and that doesn't tell me what the RPM is of the spindle and I'm most interested in knowing what that is. So uh, what I've done to, is put together not an experiment but a way of measuring this and making a speed chart for myself. So in the spindle I have mounted my tachometer, my uh, Stuart Warner uh, portable hand tachometer and you know I don't believe this thing is, is uh, for permanent use but actually I would like to have it mounted on the on the top of the drill press uh, with the spindle uh, permanently but I would have to have 
uh, a right angle drive to do that up there so I'm not going to do that but uh, with this mounted uh, in the chuck and tied together here so I don't have to hold it and we got a mirror so I can see what the reading is so uh, turning the machine on now at 20 Hertz I am getting approximately 100 RPM if you look at the tachometer so I'm making up a chart so that uh, 20 Hertz equals 100 RPM and these are all just approximate because the accuracy of the uh, of this is you know marginal uh, how you're going to read the needle you know within that range and all of that and and it doesn't quite zero out but now I'm going to move this up to 30 and you can see that the speed increased a little bit to approximately 200 now I'm moving it up to 40 and 50 a little too high there's 50 and then there's 60 which is top speed and there we are and I'm going to make a better chart and mount it here on the uh, belt guard so that's that little uh, endeavor that I did hopefully most of you have one of these Stuart Warner tachometers they made a lot of those and they're still available but they're quite costly new buy one on eBay in my shop I have two drill presses that I use all the time and this little uh, Walker Turner here that's pretty much what I would call my high-speed uh, drill press for small bits and higher speeds and I always wanted to run slow speeds for big bits so that's what I'm going to do with this other one that's going to run and be dedicated to these slower speeds. I measured the RPM some years ago and made a little chart on the side of the Walker Turner and you can see that the very slowest speed on it is 600 and that is not all that uh, slow when you get into half inch and larger drill bits and it goes clear up to 4,000 RPM, a speed which I would never use but uh, with woodworking you know you might get up into some of those speeds but generally I never take this uh, drill press off the 600 RPM step on the pulleys. I printed out a chart then I reduced it a little bit and I've got a hanging back there. There wasn't any good place to tape it onto the machine because all the surfaces are compound curves have you ever thought about this that the entire country is being taken over by the battery companies and the printer companies you know they give uh, the printers away at cost and then charge you an arm and a leg for the uh, uh, printer cartridges which last only a few days then you gotta buy another one for 40 bucks so I've gotten totally away from the uh, colored ones and go to the uh, use the black and white laser type toner cartridges they last a lot longer but uh, yeah I think it's a conspiracy don't you well I got a little off the subject there and uh, I've about exhausted the subject of very uh, variable uh, frequency drives and uh, that concludes this series of videos on that subject this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now